My name is Nizette Rydell. I'm the meteorologist in charge of the National Weather Service Forecast Office here in Boulder, Colorado. Well, the data set we're talking about today is the whole Earth infrared image from the GOES satellite. And we actually get this data set in almost real time in Science on a Sphere. What we're looking at here today is the infrared image. So we're sensing the temperature of the atmosphere and watching how the cold and warm areas uh, move in the atmosphere around the globe. So we can see low pressure systems, which would be the very cold uh, tops, bright colors on the, on the infrared imagery. We can see those as they develop and as they wane, as those systems rotate around the globe. We can also discern high pressure areas because those are the places where generally there aren't very many clouds and we can actually watch the other clouds rotate around those relatively clear high pressure areas. So we can learn a lot by looking at these clouds just about where low and high pressure systems are, sort of the basis for weather forecasting. One of the features that always pops out on the infrared data set is the Intertropical Convergence Zone, the ITCZ. And that's this band around the equator, a little bit north, a little bit south, of very active thunderstorms. They're actually clumps of thunderstorms that stay along and around the equator. Uh, and you just see them bubble up and dissipate as this data set moves through. It's kind of always there, but it's also a birthplace for um, storms that move off the equator and can affect uh, the mid-latitudes where we live. The data comes from the GOES satellites. Um, they orbit the Earth at a constant location. They're always over the same location in the Earth. The idea being to get an observing tool above the Earth uh, that looked over the same part of the globe all the time so that we could watch weather patterns, cloud patterns evolve underneath. There are now GOES satellites and other similar satellites around the entire globe so we can see the whole Earth at any one time. These satellites, the GOES satellites that we're talking about that produce this data set, are located over the equator for most of their um, operating lifetime. Because of that, as you get closer to the poles, the angle of incidence of the camera uh, can cause distortions or even blank spots in the data set. So over the poles we may not see as well as we do in other parts of the globe. They do a lot more things than just take a visible or infrared picture, but we're still taking visible and infrared pictures because those are the very basis of satellite observations. Getting this data in near real time probably doesn't help our viewers forecast, but it does help the people who are demonstrating Science on a Sphere, conducting tours with Science on a Sphere, talk about something and tie it to what's actually happening outside the window or what happened yesterday. People are able to relate very clearly to a storm that occurred this week or something they saw in the news. So getting that data to Science on a Sphere in a real time has a much more uh, real educational value to people who are looking at that data set.